Thank you, my man. Appreciate it. Hello, everyone. My name is Taylor Twelman. I'm the lead soccer analyst for ESPN. I'm also an Audi ambassador. It's an absolute pleasure today to be part of the Soccer X Connected and to host today's panel, as we said, the evolution of sports partnerships. And I think this one's going to be very interesting to all of you because it's a tie, the tide's changing with Audi of America. Uh, as we just said, Shauna Bircher, who's Audi of America, head of experiential marketing. She's got technical difficulties. She's going to try to join us. Sana Schwab, MLS Vice President, Partnership Marketing. Will Tidy, Senior um, Manager Strategy, Bleacher Report. And Jake Davis, who just got out of bed, the midfielder from Sporting Kansas City Academy. Jake, I'm just kidding. Uh, let's get right into it, guys. Time is of the essence. Uh, sports partnerships have evolved so much over the years, but in particular, over the last 24 to 48 months. What was once viewed as just signage, hospitality deals, it's now become a little bit more of an authentic partnership that enhances the fan experience, accomplishes partner business objectives, but most importantly, from my perspective, it grows the on-field product. Will, I want to start with you. When it comes to sports partnerships and brands, uh, what makes soccer so appealing from your perspective? Yeah, thanks, Taylor. Well, it's my favorite subject, obviously. Um, we start with the fact that the soccer audience is a very active and passionate fan base, incredibly engaged on social media, and we'll get to some numbers on Bleacher Report later. From there, I think what you have is an audience that is interested in sports generally. We did some research last year. 86% of soccer fans are also following NBA and NFL across Bleacher Report app. So you're hitting a wide demographic and you're tapping into a young, affluent, really excited soccer audience. Um, so it's just an exciting place for brands to play right now. Sana, from your perspective, I think what's interesting is that many people at ESPN and outside the league look at it and say they're appealing. These brands are appealing to a younger demographic. I, how have the brand's perception of soccer in the United States changed over the years? Absolutely. Well, thank you, Taylor. I'm so delighted to be here. Um, I think brands are really seeing the power of the sport due to the global nature of it. And when they look at both brand and business um, objectives and what they're looking to do, they see the impact of the sport and the long-term growth that it can bring um, with the target that soccer does have, particularly from a participatory standpoint with youth soccer. And that's where Audi has been tremendous um, in terms of not only fueling the growth of soccer, um, in the States, we're really providing that opportunity and access for more players to have, um, you know, a shot to enter the likes of MLS. Sana, how did the deal with Audi come to fruition? Because it really is something that is tangible in trying to help the on the field product. How did that come to fruition? Yeah, I think, you know, the point you made earlier, I think historically, um, you know, sponsorships used to be very much about brand awareness. Um, you Bridge logos and signage, um, but what's so fantastic about Audi um, is the need and the desire to be authentic and to make impact. Um, they really came to the table and said, what can we do to impact the sport, to grow the league in North America, um, and really provide that access um, where otherwise you would not have it. Um, so I think, you know, the being very um, centric about fans and consumers at the core and wanting to make a long-term impact um, is what really was the kernel of what we've developed together. Will, from your experience of just following the academies and following the Jakes of the world, were you surprised at all at the evolution of this game in this country with the help of these sponsorships? I don't think so. I think anecdotally, I have kids that play here. Um, yep. The youth game is huge. Every kid is almost a rite of passage. And then, and then I think to provide a window into how we're nurturing um, developing the next generation of, of U.S. soccer talent with Audi's help um, is great storytelling vehicle for Bleacher Report and something that our audience is particularly excited in because they want to know ahead of everybody else if a guy like Jake Davis is going to be a star on the U.S. national team come the 2026 World Cup. They want to have seen it here first, basically. Sana, as some of you at home can see, Shauna, but she still can't hear us, so we'll get to her in a moment. But Sana, Audi's adopted a complete outlook on soccer. They've got partnerships with both the league, but also with the clubs. In the 25 years, how has that kind of partnership come to this league? Because it wasn't that long ago I was in this league, and it was struggling to find that, yet almost 
overnight, it's completely changed in the blink of an eye. How did Audi take over so much of this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, again, that ties to um, recognizing the potential and the growth of the sport, but also keeping their consumers um, at the core, whether at a local level, um, which they have that engagement from a club perspective, at a national level. Um, and then, of course, as they look at what different objectives are within the organization, you know, having a partnership with MLS, having a partnership with, um, you know, the various clubs that they do, um, having the rights and naming of uh, Audi Fields, you know, in D.C., all of those are very impactful ways of measurable results and value to the organization, uh, leveraging a passion point that their consumers have. Jake, you're right in the midst of, of this academy life and, and what Sporting Kansas City is doing. Audi Goals Drive Progress has just done a ton of trying to bridge the gap between finding the players in and around this country. You're doing it. They help with housing. They help, help with transportation, education. How important has that been for you and your teammates to have those resources? Yeah, it's really important. I think if you look at a lot of the guys who graduated from the academy and um, who are with Sporting KC2 or with the first team, host family and having transportation are probably some of the most important things enabling us to actually be here and develop and get to where we are now. Um, uh, it's important also to have a host family just because moving into a new, to a new city, to a new area, you want to feel welcomed, you want to feel comfortable with what you're doing. And I think having a host family makes it a lot easier rather than that, you know, making your whole family pick up and move your things, starting kind of a whole new different life. So I think especially that having a host family, what Audi does for us, it's extremely important for us to be able to have these, those type of resources, you know. Well, as we're talking about the evolution of partnerships in soccer in this country, particular with Major League Soccer, what's also evolved in our world is that soccer has been primarily a digital fan, right? And they can get so much of their media digitally, which is completely opposite of how you and I got it little, literally 10 years ago. How has the media like the Academy on Bleacher Report impacted the digital space? Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, we're seeing such incredible social engagement around soccer specifically at Bleacher Report. Our soccer specific handle be our football in the month of August was the third most engaged uh, sports handle across the entire market, across the world, which is a pretty incredible stat, 151 million social engagement. So what we're seeing there is that soccer is really a powerful driver with a young audience and a series like the Academy, what we're trying to do there is just involve our, our audience, right? It's, it's less about telling them a story and just leaving it with them. We're trying to include them in this journey, making them feel part of it, take them inside this Academy and give them this kind of fan first and community driven content so that they can meet kids like Jake and have this wonderful experience of being on the inside and, and being part of it. I think we see our audiences as, as being like we are, you know, younger, uh, yeah. obviously, but, uh, but, you know, they're fans and we're fans and, and, and fans are making the content. Jake, what was it like training with makeup on? <sighs> nah, nah. <laughs> It, in all seriousness, though, Jake, when you look at this series, what, what was it like to be part of it and, and know that this series impacting so many players and families in and around this sport around the country? It, it was honestly, it's a great thing to be a part of, especially just I think sporting sporting's academy deserves the recognition. But also it's nice to see that um, people who aren't people who don't even know what we really do here get to see really what we do and how not only it benefits kids and players on the field, but off the field and how it prepares them for the next stage in their life. And I'm, I'm extremely happy to be a part of it. And I know that kids who want to get to the next level and they see that I, I hope it motivates them and it, it shows what it really takes to get here and um, what they have to put in to get where they want to be as a pro. Son, and when I look at this, and, and I know everyone at Major League Soccer knows how much I believe in this program because of the on the field impact the tangibles that Audi is providing. I, why do you think Audi was so engaged in that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think it's the desire to make an impact. Um, yeah. And I, I, I wish I had, you know, a, a different, more complex answer, but I think they are just, you know, they're a game changer in the industry and they want to do meaningful, impactful things. 
and they recognize that the growth of the sport and the growth of our league is really going to be fueled by youth. Um, and that's where they've put their time, their resources, uh, their efforts uh, behind. And I think it's just such a tremendous thing um, where, you know, individuals who wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity and some of the things that Jake shared now do because of Audi, because of this partnership, because of their care, uh, you know, to make this impact and provide that access. Shauna, can you hear us? I can. There she is. Welcome. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can, I, I can hear you just fine, Sorry, Shauna. a little janky. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Shauna Bircher uh, from Audi of America. Shauna, we've been talking so much uh, just about the goals drive progress. And I, I guess my biggest question to you, and I want to make it big picture, why did Audi do this program to try to take over and help youth development in Major League Soccer? Um, I think it's just so important, or we saw the importance in it. And being uh, um, Erica to grow this for sure, Major League Soccer. But, um, they're only 25 years young. Their fan base is so diverse. And if you go to any match, you can't imagine how inclusive that diversity then becomes. And so partnering with them made perfect sense for us um, as a brand. And then the opportunity to see where Major League Soccer can grow and that we need to be fostering that talent of tomorrow became so important to us to be able to remove some of those barriers and make it easier for us to just showcase the talent that this country has um, and to become the powerhouse we know that we can be. How, if, Sana, I want to go back to you. I Obviously, look at this. We're Soccer X. We're all over Zoom. We're doing this digitally. COVID-19, the global pandemic, how has that changed sports partnerships, if it has at all, if not, maybe it's helped it. I, I don't know that answer. How's it changed? No, absolutely. I think, you know, COVID has um, forced us all to adapt in ways um, that we probably wouldn't have anticipated um, and to be really nimble. But I think what it's um, allowing for is innovation and different ways of engagement. I think traditionally you had a lot of, you know, on-site experiential engagement. Um, and now you're seeing brands um, and leagues such as ours um, really find ways to leverage technology, to leverage digital and social means um, to be engaging, have relevant experiences, content, um, to continue to have that emotional connection, you know, with our fans that really turns into that loyalty. Well, I want to stay with that topic of COVID-19 and global pandemic, because I don't think people understand how difficult it is to film a series like the Academy during this, how difficult was that in trying to pull this off? Yeah, there were a lot of challenges, um, Taylor, and massive credit to the, the guys at Sporting KC who were so amenable and helped us. We had to put safety and security first. Um, we did a lot of interviews over Zoom, as, as Jake will attest. And I think a really cool part of it is we had to get innovative and creative. And one of the things we did was some DIY stuff where we gave the players license, look, take a cell phone, film around your house, show us your everyday life. And in a funny way, that was great for our audience because they're consuming content through their phone. It yep. feels very organic for them to see that type of thing. So I think we did the best we could and it, it, in a way it's incredibly relatable because everyone's living this same COVID experience. So we captured it the best we could. Sean, I want to go back to you because I think over the last, and we were talking about a little bit early on when I was playing in the league versus now, it's a, it's a completely different conversation. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago, but in particular over the last, I'd say five to seven years, why has Major League Soccer become so attractive for a brand like you and Audi to do it in a variety of ways uh, with, with that partnership and with that sponsorship? I think you've seen with the how young their fan base is, they're also super engaged and really digitally savvy, which during times like this in COVID, um, and the league has been able to work with us on some really creative solutions that we've come up with. And it was, oh, I guess, a wonderful compliment 
moment um, to have the academy come out at this time because they are so plugged in to what's happening. They're looking for really rich content. I mean, the fans have really embraced this academy series. Yeah, too, the academy so series has been it. fantastic. Um, We've been, I mean, the response has been phenomenal. We're, we're really excited about that. Um, but I think it is a testament to just how digitally these fans are and how hungry they are for this really rich, purposeful content. It's a, it's a thoughtful series also, but I, and I think fans are looking for more of that, right? They, they're so plugged into what is going on. They don't want just some kind of surface um, information anymore or really fed a lot of overt branded elements. Um, what we've been able to do here because the fans embrace it, is give them something really rich and behind the scenes. So um, we're really excited about that. Son, I guess my question is how, do, how does one judge success with all of these partnerships? Yeah, I think it really lies in, you know, at the core, what are the goals and objectives from a brand and business standpoint? And how can we show those measurable results? And I think, you know, I, I look at Shauna last year when we were in 2020 planning meetings um, and, and talking about, you know, what we we're going to do this year, but really honing in on, you know, what were those key metrics going to be? Where did we have to show, you know, performance of platforms, um, media spend, um, you know, what was happening with the Goals Drive Progress program, and really outlining that to be able to show impact results um, and the value that is delivered to the organization. Um, because I think as Shauna can attest to, um, you know, brands have so much uh, increased pressure to quantify uh, ROI. Um, and I think, you know, we have to be very uh, custom with what is it that each brand um, is looking to achieve by leveraging the, the partnership. Well, from a media perspective, uh, I, how do you guys judge success? And more importantly, during this process, has that changed at all? Yeah, I don't think it's changed for us. I mean, views is a metric that goes across the industry. Uh, the Academy is doing great, really strong performance. I think most important for us is engagement though, because that's how we're judging whether a piece of content is really hitting home and capturing uh, the attention and the engagement numbers on this one are, are strong. So those are the two metrics that we're looking at. I prefer the engagement one because I, um, I think it's more telling for the, for the success of the content. Shauna, has your expectations for this program changed uh, because of COVID-19? Um, um, I don't think our expectation approach when we, we started this, um, but I think we've been really pleasantly surprised. And our, our hope at the end of the day is that fans just get more engaged um, with their MLS academies. They're looking for um, that next talent that's coming up and being brought up to um, you know, their, their top team to be able to play um, professionally. So for us, the, the expectation has been just giving fans something that they do, is, as Will mentions, get engaged with, and long-term that they're looking forward to that. Um, and they're just so excited that, you know, if they've got someone from Sporting KC, whether they come up to or they get traded somewhere internationally, they're still a fan of that person because they came out of their hometown academy. So um, our expectation is just to give fans something that they're really excited um, about, engaged with, gives them more talk value, um, and something to look forward to. Sana, this is an interesting question coming from the audience. What can we do to get more brands to listen to the challenges and barriers young footballers from ethnic, urban, and working class communities in the United States face in their development? That's a really good question. I mean, I think it's so important to be able to um, share the stories and the experiences. Um, because I think when you have that contextual information and can really be able to demonstrate what that path may be, what those barriers and challenges, you know, may be um, and provide that contextual information, I think it really helps to kind of unlock what the potential there is to assist or provide access um, and to mitigate those barriers that may be present. Jake, I want to add, ask you because you're literally in the academy right now how has your experience with the sport been more diverse as you've gotten to be you know entwined in, in engage with sporting kansas city's academy it's changed hasn't it i think so i mean i think uh just i think also looking at the level um i mean 
I think there's a lot of stuff that you don't, I honestly, when moving here, I didn't, I didn't think I would be a part of, especially um, having a good system, moving up, getting different opportunities. I think that's something I didn't really expect and I'm glad that I was a part of it. And I mean, I was just, I mean, I'm glad I've gotten better through this process. And yeah, I mean, I think sporting does it really well. I think that's the one thing that has stood out to me, Will, is just that this sport, of all the sports in this country, it's got the ability to make it more diverse. And a lot of that comes through brand partnerships, sports partnerships, and that evolution kind of coincides now with the diversity of the sport. Do you guys see the same? We do. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's inspirational stories to be told here. There's stories about how um, – different players have different journeys. I mean, just through the Academy series, um, Jake will tell you about Natty, one of his uh, teammates. And uh, you have you have players come from all, all over the world who have all kinds of different upbringings and some privileges, some not. And I think it's about making this game what we know it is, which is a universally accessible sport. And these MLS academies are giving kids, regardless of, of how they grew up and, and how affluent their family was or where they came from, they're giving... Um, the right opportunities to the players who show the right hunger and the right talent. Sonam, we have a little bit of time here, maybe 30 seconds or so. I, sports partnerships are constantly changing. Uh, what do you expect to see in 2021 in the years beyond? Yeah, you know, I think there's so much that COVID is going to impact, but I think as we're all seeing, um, sports have such a key role in society. Um, as do brands. And I think that people not only expect, but are really demanding to know what um, your values are. So I think we all have this really great opportunity um, to show what our values are, to be able to have that connectivity because we are able to use our platforms and that is gonna be one way to further drive those relationships that we have with our fans um, and our consumers by really leveraging this universal passion point Jonah, how do you see this partnership with Major League Soccer evolving over the next, I'd say, two to three years? Yeah, I, I um, echo everything that Sana said. For me, sports partnerships overall are really need to continue to be more thoughtful and purposeful. Um, that's how we've tried to approach everything and, and be we're only limited by our own creativity and mission too. Um, we're leveraging everything that we possibly can to make it as engaging for fans. And we're going to continue to do that with Major League Soccer, too. So we want to create really broad opportunities that leverage all the assets that we have, whether it's a league, it's a team, media partners, um, and fans as close fashion as we possibly can, uh, but in a really thoughtful and purposeful way. Well, uh, I know the Academy, what is it, episode two or three is coming out very soon. Can you tell everybody where they can see this? Yeah, the trailer for episode two is out right now on the BR Football social handles. Um, obviously, get out, share that. And the episode itself goes live end of September. <laughs> um, yeah, we're excited. We tip, we, we've, had, we've got a crew on the ground now, um, and we just we, we want to meet and more players and, and tell more about stories of uh, the ilk of, of Jake's. Yeah, it's a great series uh, for those of you that haven't watched it. I'm going to wrap up here uh, before we go. Uh, I want to thank everyone for coming on. It was a real honor to, and privilege to talk about this, something I firmly believe in will change the landscape of youth development. Shauna Bercher, Audi of America, Head of Experiential Marketing. Sana Schwab, MLS Vice President, Partnership Marketing. Will Tidy, Senior Manager, Strategy, Bleacher Report. And Jake Davis, my cousin, midfielder from Sporting Kansas City Cat. We're not cousins. We're not related. Jake wants to make everyone understand we are not related. But anyways, um, Jake, appreciate you joining us. And uh, thanks, everyone. I appreciate the time today.